In the end, it wasn't as tight a race as the pundits had predicted. And this time, there's no long legal wrangling to keep us concerned. George W. Bush has been re-elected US president, and he got 51% of the vote and saw his Republican Party make gains in both houses of Congress. In victory, President Bush pledged to work to earn the support of those who didn't vote for him. Our senior White House correspondent has our first report. That's John King. No recount and no doubt about the winner this time. A rowdy Republican celebration, but also an attempt to set a new tone for a second term. So today I want to speak to every person who voted for my opponent. To make this nation stronger and better, I will need your support, and I will work to earn it. But make no mistake, the victors seek bipartisanship, but on their terms, and believe a clear majority of the popular vote and bigger Republican margins in Congress give them the upper hand. President Bush ran forthrightly on a clear agenda for this nation's future, and the nation responded by giving him a mandate. Celebration on this day. Talk of cooperation will be tested early in the new term. They'll be campaigning for the history books, for a legacy. The Iraq war still divides the parties, as does a second term agenda that includes tax simplification, health care changes Democrats say fall short, and revamping Social Security. I see a great day coming for our country, and I am eager for the work ahead. Senior Bush aides believe the first partisan dust up could come within weeks. Chief Justice William Rehnquist has cancer and the White House is quietly preparing to name a successor. And cabinet and staff turnover is in the works after a first term noteworthy for stability at the top. It will be, in fact, wholesale changes in a second Bush administration. Gone is the legitimacy debate of 2000. When Mr. Bush won the White House but lost the popular vote. The voters turned out in record numbers and delivered an historic victory. It was a dramatic turnaround. Early exit polls spooked the White House. And as Mr. Bush watched the votes come in, Ohio met expectations, a nail-biter, and the decisive state. Mr. Bush went to bed at 5 a.m., confident of re-election. Six hours later, a conversation in the Oval Office. Senator Kerry calling to concede the election, guaranteeing that this President Bush, unlike his father, would get a second term. John King, CNN, the White House.